Hey. Just uh getting set up over here. I'll take these things off now. What's up everyone? How's it going? Uh so, I don't know if you guys know this, but let me I'm gonna let you in on a secret. Sometimes I watch my own videos. And, uh, hey, Major Bang Geek, comics and stuff is in the chat. We're doing portfolio review today, by the way. Um, we're going to talk about that in a second. Uh, sometimes, sometimes, I'm going to touch the mic for a second. Sometimes I watch my own videos and the last video we did felt like it was just like three quarters of an idea just never completed over and over and over and over again it was like i i i feel like i i didn't thoroughly enough make my point about evan dorkin uh thoroughly didn't make my point about a uh, jen bartell or spike trockman uh iron spike i like i felt like i was just and i mean maybe that was just like me being distracted for the whole day uh just carried over into like, hey, I have all these ideas about things. None of them are complete. <laughs> yeah, that was distracted Nick Day. Yeah, I don't, man, it was weird. I was rewatching because like I had full ideas in my brain and I like literally couldn't keep up. What's the point of completing points? There's more stuff to talk about. Oh, look, a butterfly. Yeah. Yeah, I kept I kept thinking like my my points were this. Evan Evan Dorkin comes from an old guard of comics like pre-internet and I think he's opportunities are out there for him and for whatever reason he's decided not to take those opportunities. It's totally his decision. He can do whatever he wants. Um I'll support him regardless because I want I like his stuff. I, stuff's great uh i'll forever buy evan dorkin comics um even stuff that he's he's writing i i really enjoy um my point was for you guys to if you're coming up as an artist don't feel like you necessarily like obviously stick to your guns but don't necessarily feel like you can't be a little fluid like you can't adjust as you go if you see an opportunity and no one's mining that opportunity, take it. Go for it. Do what you want to do, is my point. Um, you know how to host from uh, your phone, but you're on your iMac now, so trying to figure it out. Uh, did share it to your social links. Oh, nice. Cool. Uh, yeah, we got to edit your info when we get, when we get into the thing. Um, yeah, and then with uh, Spike and Jen, I feel like they are two examples of what Evan Dorkin could be doing, but isn't necessarily. Um, and there's a lot of choices. Like, you know, it's, it's about like what you want to get into, what you feel comfortable with, what you, what you, what your end goals are. Like, I don't know what Ev Evan's end goals are. So like, it, it's not a criticism against him. I'm just saying like, they are the opposite side of the coin where they are. Uh, Spike is working Kickstarter like a, freaking pro like she is so on top of that it's, it's incredible the way she runs it the way she's she's like every single kickstarter she figures it out like a little bit more uh and it's amazing to watch um and then jen is on the uh on the other side is like running her own shop really really expertly and she is in tuned with what her audience wants um, and it's, it's also really good to watch. Uh, he doesn't think those things should be quote part of comics. Well, see, this is the thing. This is, this is cause I know there's a lot of like old guard of comics, old guard, um, meaning like late, late nineties and earlier, um, like variants and stuff. Like I get it. I understand, but the reality is, is that these things are part of comics and like him being like, I don't think that variants should be part of comics is not going to make variants go away. 
And I think that there is... I used to be the same way. I used to be very anti-variance. Like, I... In, in mentally, when I was buying comics, when I was coming up, I was like, variants are terrible. Let's never get variants. And now I'm kind of like, variants are a fun way for you to share a project with your friends. You know? Like, I look at variants now as like, you know, like we put out a variant. Uh, my eyes have been watering all day. I don't know what I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's allergies or what, but I apologize. But if it looks like I'm getting emotional, I'm not getting emotional. <laughs> like I don't know if it's staring at screens all day or what, but oh my god, I've been I've been wrecked. Uh, variants, I feel like are are a good way for like like we do on the on the realm we do a variant for every issue, and it's like. Today is sad, Nick Day. Yeah, just so happy to see you guys. Uh, and, like, it's a great way to be like, hey, especially Jeremy and Seth, like, did a lot of work building the universe of the realm. Like, I kind of weaseled my way in, but just crying because he loves variants. Yeah, I kind of weaseled my way in and, like, now I'm part of the team. But, like, they do a great job of, like, figuring out what the world is and expanding on it. And then as, like, a like gesture of like, Hey, we have these friends. Uh, they do great work. We love their work. We want to show it off. And we want, we want to like share the world that we built with them in some small way. And that's what I kind of look at like variants as, especially with creator owned stuff. You really like variants. You, you dislike the hoops. You have to jump through the get variants. Yeah. I mean, that's a whole other discussion. It's, it's man. I just wish comics could be easy. Uh, but anyway, that's that's the old stream. This is the new stream. We are uh, giving a portfolio review to our very own comics and stuff who is in the chat. Uh, Jose Lopez, I believe. Uh, I, I hope that I'm pronouncing that right. And it's not like a, a different pronunciation. Pronunciation. Um, Let's kick it over. So this is the link that he gave me. We gotta we gotta edit the bottom text crawl here. There we go. There we go. Look look at that. Look at I got to I got to crinkle up. Look at that down there. That text. Look at that text and then read it and then know it and then follow him on on uh, Twitter. Um so here's the link that he gave me. Um I think this is a uh it says powered by Adobe Adobe portfolio. So I think that this is like a stock kind of thing for Adobe. It's fine. It does the job. If you were looking to get more professional than this, uh, you know, putting a put a space at the end so that F doesn't get cut off. Oh, is it getting cut off? Oh my, this is. We did it. We we did it. <laughs> okay. All right. Now, now we're ready to start. So the first thing I like to do uh, with a portfolio is, first of all, um, is presented very professionally, sequential pages, pinups. Uh, you got all kinds of stuff down here for Instagram pressing issues. Um, we're going to make sure all this stuff works. Twitter. I don't have a Facebook, so we're not going to click that. And we're going to click the YouTube link. Looks like it works. Looks like it works. Looks like it works. There we go. All right. So uh, that stuff works. Let's, let's click the contact. I assume this is going to work. <laughs> uh, let's click the videos. Oh, this is, this is wild. This looks like a face when it's this size. Let's click it. Whoa. We're loading all the videos. 
They're portrait mode. This is wild. This is cool. I don't know if you need this. Full disclosure. Um, I think that this, the video section is fine, but like, here's, okay, here's the thing. Why is contacts bigger than portfolio and videos? Well, on the landing, you're on the portfolio, so that does not need to be big. And videos, I think, are the a secondary thing. The, the thing that I'm worried about, and I'm not, it's not, it's not like a negative point posting the videos. Video, the videos are very cool. Obviously, I care about videos. Um, but I don't think that it is necessary for the portfolio. I think that um, anything, anytime you do like any extra stuff with a portfolio link, you run the risk of muddying the message. If it's not like the a portfolio should be, let's get into like okay, all right. <laughs> Have you ever considered a live stream? Uh, let's for before we get in, before we get into this. First of all. Comics and stuff, Jose Lopez. Thank you so much for submitting. Um, I'm stoked to go over the portfolio with you, and uh, it's it takes guts to even give me a portfolio and let us talk about it on stream. That's awesome, and you deserve all the props in the world for that. Um, the second thing is a portfolio. What is what should a portfolio be? A portfolio should be this like laser focused this is what i do here here's my best work if you want more of it like contact me get in touch with me it should be like halfway between a business card and a resume um but for art with art instead of words does that make sense i think that makes sense I'm going to put this water down because otherwise I'm just going to keep drinking it. Put it over there. Um, okay. So with that said, I love that like you open it up. First thing you see is sequential pages. Perfect. Um, we're going to get into pinups and stuff when we get there. Oh, sexy. Uh, comics is a sexy time. It's fine. Uh, uh, now it's time to rend, rend you limb for limb and critique not your artwork, but your identity and your persona as an artist. No, we're not going to do that. We're going to try to give you uh, all the uh, positive uh, reinforcement that you need to get you on the path. So it opens up to uh, a bunch of pages up here and then one giant page down here. That's this page. It's kind of interesting. You can go. We can go deeper. Whoa, we're too deep, too deep. Okay, and then this doesn't, okay, and then we got pinups down here, the pin, links for the pinups. Okay, we're going to get mostly into the sequential stuff because this is where you're going to, like, if you're looking to get work, nine times out of ten, uh, editors don't really want to see pinups. Like, any editor worth their salt that is going to hire you on a project doesn't care how well you do a pinup because it's not going to show off your skills uh, in a contextual, you know, sequential kind of thing. It's not going to show off your storytelling. It's not going to show off how you can hold a scene together. It's not going to show all that stuff off. So we're going to get, we're going to get into this. Um, let's start with the first page. So this is a page that I feel subject matter wise, you're doing yourself a disservice. We talk about this. Uh, I've talked about this before on portfolio reviews that this is a sequential page in that it is two guys' faces five times. Like, you're not really able to show off what you can do in a page like this. Like, you give this to... All this, all this page shows is that you can render a face. And you can show that and also show a hundred other things on like a more interesting portfolio page. Um, the other thing is, and this is going to be a running theme through the, through the project is uh, you're going to want to like watch your values a little bit. Um, 
you can pull your highs higher. Um, your lows are look okay on this. Uh, the, the darker shades look okay on this, but in some of the other pieces, and I'm jumping ahead a little, some of the other pieces look a, on the dark side. Um, and this could just be your monitor that needs calibration. Um, we can't, uh, we can't interact with this page, huh? Okay. Um, one of the things we can, we can actually, we're going to move on from this page, but we may come back to it. Because there is something I want to talk to you about, but it may be interested. It may be illustrated on other pages as well. So we have a we have a western. Let me see. Do we have any pages that are like back to back together? Just these two, I think. You're throwing out your monitors. Oh God! Don't throw them out. We're gonna okay, okay, all right. Full. Let's do full complete ideas. Don't throw out your monitors. What you want to do is you want to pick up uh, one of these or one of these or even so I had um, I had this guy ages ago. He's he's very cheap now. The thing about the software that comes with this one is that and these are tiny cameras that suction cup to your monitor and calibrate it for you. Um, the thing about this guy that's kind of funny is that hey Patrick Berlin, thank you for the follow. Um, they will, uh, this one, the software is like, do you, are you using a CRT or an LCD screen? <laughs> it just starts showing the age a little bit. Um, I've heard that the hardware in all of these devices, these kind of like, and this is just a spider uh, monitor calibrator machine. Um I've heard that all of these devices have like all of the same tech in them and that the only difference between them is the software. So you might not need to spend $142. I understand that it's, that's like very expensive for something like this, but my advice is try it, try the cube, the spider cube. I haven't tried it, but it's probably fine. Um, see, it's got a little camera on it. Um, I don't know what, what? Why is this guy playing? This guy's playing pool with it, but yeah, what you're what it's gonna do is like check your monitor for color. What it's kind of bad at is fixing your uh, light and dark. Um, I'm gonna show you my desktop for a second. Nobody judge me. So, if you open up the um, this is the control panel for my uh. For my desktop color settings if you look my gamma is like way down if i if i click this and i don't know if this is actually going to do anything for the stream <laughs> you may just get the same image no matter what maybe i can't yeah you're getting the same image no matter what it's change. it's changing on mine it's not changing on yours um basically what i'm saying is like this this slider here the gamma i don't know what kind of like um control panel you're going to have for your monitor um remember to play bar sports with all your valuable tech products yeah uh you're going to want to like mess with the gamma so that you can um accurately put like deeper colors down uh the best way to do this is to take an image that you have with a lot of different color on it uh get it printed if you don't have a printer or print it and then try to match it to the print version um, based on based on you know whatever you whatever you need uh, and that's that's all in that gamma slider that gamma slider basically says you know the darkest parts are going to be this dark you know it like pulls your deep end um, and this is this is the problem this is how um, I think you're ending up with pages that look like this like on my monitor over there which is not calibrated for print, this page looks okay. On this monitor, this page is just black. Like, we see, like, the car here and, like, Batman and Batman and this this tech. But, like, all of this is, like, basically black. Um, there is no way to actually, like, uh, get the page down on here. 
so I'm gonna do a screenshot, um, and then we're gonna we're gonna uh, dump it into. Uh, hold on, let me get that. Let me get that screenshot. We're gonna uh, put it into put it into Photoshop. Maybe. Yeah. So, if you look, like, and I know this is not like a super accurate representation because uh, we're doing a screenshot rather than uh, using the raw TIFF file or, or whatever you worked on. Um, like, here's like one of the darkest parts of your image. And look how deep we are. We're like almost in the black here. Um, we are at 65, 78, 58, 73. You have 250 percent ink limit but you have in the k you have 75 percent k like the default the default black is 90 percent k for photoshop like that is how deep black you're going um if this saw print you would not be able to tell like there's a border here it would just this would just blend into black um and then this this is not as high as you think it is like if we look at this uh, color pick here, this looks a little bit lighter over here. Um, and then we look at this guy right here. We're going from like here to here. And it's so dark. It's We're 73% here and then we're 42% here. That means that out of the total range of black, darkness doesn't have to be dark. Exactly. Out of the total range of black, you're putting like... 50% of black down on there and it's just it's it's muddying your whole thing you're it and it like it it is a pain in the ass to deal with but it is something that you kind of need to figure out um and this is something that like you could be working on your mind this is something like like okay full disclosure in the beginning of my career I didn't know any of this stuff and I was working on my monitor, working on my monitor, working on my monitor. First thing I did for um, DC Comics was a backup with Jeremy Hahn, and it was a disaster. Like, everything was too dark. Uh, DC production was, like, tweaking the levels to make it kind of, like, printable. And they were, like, I was having conversations with them where they were, like, why is it so dark? And I was, like, I don't know what you mean. It looks fine. Like, just print it. Like, I know what I'm doing. I was, like cocky asshole about it so i'm sure that went over real well i didn't get a lot of dc work after that by the way um it took a little while for them to warm back up to me <laughs> uh dang nick yeah <laughs> uh but i was also i was also doing a thing where and i don't know if you're doing this but at the time i was doing a lot of stuff where i was like multiplying textures and things down on top of each other and then what it was happening was it was getting darker and darker and darker. And uh, by the end of making the piece, I was like, I can't see the forest for the trees. Like, I've been staring at the thing for so long and it's it's so dark that, like, I don't know what I'm doing anymore. You know what I mean? Like, it's that thing where you look at if you look, go to like a hardware store, you're trying to pick out like a, a paint swatch for your house and you look at 50 different shades of the same color and you're just like after a while just like I, I don't know like they all look the same um so yeah i mean and the other thing that ron said is that like dark doesn't have to be dark when you go this dark you you want to kind of think about it like especially with superhero stuff like this is batman stuff i mean sean murphy isn't necessarily like a batman artist i mean he kind of is now but like when i think of like a Batman artist, I, I feel like ma very mainstreamy kind of comics. Um, and I don't think Sean necessarily fits into that, but, um, I do think that, uh, with like more mainstream comics, it's less about, um, figuring out, uh, hold on. I'm trying to illustrate that dark doesn't have to be dark. So like we're this is like we're mangling this thing. <laughs> Apologies. But like 
you can just do like a light blue like that in the cave. I'm trying to like use the other monitor to, to do this. This is weird. Um, and you're, you're silhouetting the, the, um, shapes that Sean has made here, you know, like even just doing this has like punched it up just a little bit. Uh, the thing about coloring mainstream books, let's finish our thoughts, um, is that a lot of times the colorist is there to showcase the line art and not overpower it. And so you want to keep that in mind. Um, that's kind of a, uh, a lot of the struggle that I'm having with Nightwing at the moment is that like I'm trying to figure out how to best uh, showcase without overpowering. Um, and when you get too dark... What you're saying is, you know, Sean Murphy, step the fuck aside. I know where the blacks go and I'm going to put them down, you know, and you don't want to you don't want to get in that headspace, <laughs> especially early on in the career. Um, but yeah, I, I this is a this is a, a this page is the worst as far as that goes. But this page is like um, kind of kind of where you're at. Uh, with this kind of thing. So let me show you real quick. I opened up the levels palette. Um, that is somewhere up here. Edit levels, maybe adjust. God, I gotta, I gotta find it. Cause I want to show it to you. Yeah, here it is. It's right here. Um, image adjust levels. So here's the levels. Even if we just like tweak this a little bit, like, just that we start to like actually see the work that you're putting down look at that we didn't even have to do nothing like now batman's like blown out but like other than that like now i can actually see the page that you made which is awesome that i want to see the page that you made um i can actually tell that you're like punching out some of the some of the line art back here you know like uh I mean, we're, we're, dre we made the highlights. Your the highlights that we saw before are, are so, so high, but like, yeah, like this is like night and day. Um, if you look like at this and we put it in grayscale, you can see like what, what is, ha what's happening here. It looks like it's just flat, dark gray, except for this and this. So yeah, you want to you want to keep this stuff in mind, and like this is this is something that like one of the things I've been doing um, is like I'll get to the end of a page and I will take the eyedropper out and I'll just like pick apart the dark. I have a problem with going too dark, and I'll like pick up the darkest things and I'll be like, how dark is this? And I'll look at the values, and I don't know that there's necessarily a range. Is this just a case of an uncalibrated monitor? A hundred percent. Yeah. I think cause like you're doing a bunch of work in here. That's like cool. And I just think we can't see it. Cause, cause it's just not like you're doing all this. Like, look at all this stuff back here. Like the mark making back here is really neat. And like, I just couldn't see it at all before like this. I can't see it. This, I can see it, you know, um, you just need a, you just need to calibrate your monitor. I don't know. We're beating a dead horse here. But the other thing that I would say is uh, watch your values a little bit. I see you're, tr you're trying to do a uh, Batman in a green car kind of thing, like lit by the screen. Um, you did it very well up here. And then down here, we're using this like green color. And then we're using this green color out here. Um, this is the back of Batman. This should be like this color up here in the corner. It should be his like headrest color. Um, when it isn't, it starts to look like Batman is, like, in the car driving, and then we're, like, it's, like, Alfred's voiceover or something, and then it's, like, Batman's somewhere else now, and then and then we're back to Alfred, and then it's, like, is he out of the car? Is he in the car? It's, like, it starts to make it, like, tough to follow. You, with color, you want to anchor down environments, like, 
give the reader a life draft. Like that is uh, a lot of the game is just being like, Hey, we're in this environment. Now we're changing to this environment. Um, you did it really well up here, but it starts to fall apart with this one panel. If you just change this background to be more uh, like like cyan, cyan blue, uh, you'll get there instead of this green. Um, I, I, I dig the, the, the stuff you're doing. Um, with Chrome, by the way, with Chrome, you want like, this is kind of like a soft highlight. And it like kind of works on more matte matte kind of metals um m-a-t-t-e that's how you spell matte um but with uh chrome you want to do like high highlights so they should be like kind of the most reflective things on the page so you can kind of like take like a section like this and then like throw a grab through it like that like not only are they going to be the most reflective things on the page but they should also have the highest ranges next to each other. And then it'll start to read as like Chrome, like that kind of thing. Um, we color some metal stuff on stream. So, I mean, you're, you've, you've been hanging around, you're a subscriber. I'm sure you've, you've seen it. Uh, the next time that you see me coloring some, some metal or whatever, uh, just kind of like make a mental note of it. Uh, kind of get away from from this uh like soft kind of approach um man let's uh hold on hold on let's we're gonna do a search but i don't want to do a search on stream because who knows what's gonna pop up So like here, like Chrome is tough, but like this is a Chrome bumper. Um, let's see if we can find one that's like a little bit, a little bit more high resolution. Yeah, here we go. So uh, you can see we're having like hard highlights next to like almost black like this thing and it's got like this swirl to it that bends with where the metal is bending um this kind of stuff makes uh coloring chrome pieces especially with cars coop is one of the best artists to look at to learn chrome yeah i to tell you the truth i needed this pointed out uh, early in my career as well, I was doing the same thing you're doing, which is just kind of like soft kind of thing. Um, you want to like, there's like, um, one of those like rat fink, uh, kind of like hot rod art stuff. Oh God. I, it's like from my childhood. I don't even know who does those, but they're awesome. And they do kind of like Chrome parts on them. So yeah, you want to, you want to, uh, uh, you want to kind of do that. You want to think about that. Um, uh, Remender was the one who was like, you got to figure this out, Nick. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, this page is, this page is kind of rough because I can't, you know, see it a whole lot in here. Uh, I think once you calibrate your monitor, I'd love to see a, um, Oh yeah, yeah. I did. We did two rounds of prints with Elsa. Um, I'd love to see this page reworked after you recalibrate your monitor because uh, I bet it's I bet it's gonna look great. Okay. Okay. Let's. That said, like you don't have any problem with that in this in this page. Like this page looks like you're not going too dark at all. But I can tell that like you're still having monitor calibration problems because, um, Oh, thank you, Patrick. Uh, when I look at this, when I look at this on the other monitor, these two guys are kind of like pushed back into space. Like you're colorizing the line art and the instinct is really, really good. Uh, creating like a little depth of field here. Uh, because with this, with this particular shot, the person would be very close to the camera and these people would be in the background, but, 
you went so dark that like on this monitor that's calibrated for print, I can't tell. I, it looks black. Um, let's uh, let's grab a screen grab of this as well. So the other thing that you can do when you um, and I know that you're having this impulse to create space. Uh, one of the things that you can do is like select stuff in the foreground and darken it up on a, uh, you know, any kind of piece where you have uh, a foreground, middle ground, background um, kind of thing going on. This is kind of the most pronounced the it becomes, but we could even do it here. Um, you want to you want to go darker as you as you get close and lighter as you get far it, you want to keep kind of keep it in mind like if it's that's only if it's daytime if it's nighttime it's reversed um try and make the two guys push back from the arms yeah so if we actually so i washed it with like a dark blue which is a little bit hold on it's the it's the right impulse it's just executed a little weird. Um, I'm trying to like balance it. So the monitor over there says it looks real good. This one looks a little dark, but you get what I'm saying. So um, do I use? Yeah, we just talked about the spider. Uh, I do use the spider. The spider is a little rough to to. You gotta get kind of get into your uh, video card settings for um, uh, gamma. But yeah, I use the spider. I should use it more often. I should like recalibrate probably once a year because monitors ebb and flow, you know, like they, as they, as they age, they die a little bit, but yeah. So in addition to like pushing the guys back, you can also pull the stuff forward by making it darker. Um, and like you can use that as a tool to kind of like push the reader where you want. Like you can make this, uh, bandito here. Is that the word? I, did I say it right? I don't even know. This, this, this wild hunk of man. Um, you can kind of like turn him and then I guess this guy is guilty by association. And this is kind of some of the stuff you want to think about when you're coloring is like your palette's really, really good on this. Um, but you can kind of turn these guys into like a visual stop sign for the uh, for the for the reader. Like this guy is threatening this guy. Like what well, how we should read this is like you know left to right. Like we should read it like this, and then we should stop here. Like because this is where the action is, and. You can kind of manipulate that with color. Um, this is this is what I'm talking about when I talk about like storytelling. Um, this is stuff that only sequential pages can show off. Uh, if you're gonna get uh, you're gonna get your job to pay for a spider, which one should you buy? Um, like I said before, I don't think that the spider, the difference in the spiders, I don't think it's. I think the hardware is all the same. I think the software is different. Um, I don't know. You got to do your research. I bought one of the more expensive ones and I don't know if I necessarily needed to, but I just wanted to have it work and have it not deal with it. But then there's like, also if you search around, there's like people make their homemade software. That is like a little bit, they think is a little bit better than the spider software. So, you know, I don't know, man, like you got to do your research. So yeah, like you can kind of like direct the eye and like you're doing it, you're, you're directing the eye a little bit with like, you try to make it like lighter here, but I think because of your monitor calibration, uh, you didn't, you didn't pull it hard enough. And this is the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about this page is that the, um, characters are a little bit close in value to the backgrounds. Um, and they just like the color of the characters and the color of the backgrounds. And I get it. It's, it's like a dusty, dirty kind of like orange washed scene, 
but like you can kind of like do something like this and then put like um and this is just like i just drag some white through here um and then kind of like make it make it make it kind of like glow a little bit uh this is just a set to screen um and that way it's like not only have we put the stop sign here for this panel for this guy to be like hey here's where we want you but now we've like literally lit the thing up like we, we are trying to, uh, thank you, Doug Swift. Hey, by the way, thank you for all the hosting. Uh, I, I see you out there and, uh, Doug, Doug Swift. I, I don't even know. Um, they do a, uh, excellent stream as well. And you guys should all follow, uh, D O I G space, space Swift. I think, no, it's all one word. D O I G Swift. Uh, They do great stuff. They do like animation work and, and all kinds of stuff. Their stream's great. I catch it when I, I catch it when I can, but man, I haven't been watching a lot of a lot of uh streams because uh huh, I've been been hustling. So yeah. So you wanna you wanna kind of like figure out and you I can see you thinking about this because you're thinking about it here. Like how do you best address foreground, middle ground, background? And you did actually pull this grad here before. And you're thinking about like, oh, I want I want the viewer here. So you you have the right 100%. We stream early on Irish time. That is why I never catch you, and I only say I only catch the vods. Yeah, I would have to be up very late. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is I. You have the right instincts, 100%. Like, I don't think that you're doing. You're not thinking about it wrong, is what I'm saying. You're thinking about it right. The only thing that you need to do from here is just kind of like refine your methods. Um, you can even like you're locked into this like dusty red uh, kind of scene. Um, and you can actually get away with doing some like other colors in here. You might you might not want to. This is subjective. But like you can you can take like this blue and like put like a secondary light source in here. Um, the thing about color is that like, you know, even though everything's, everything's blasted and red, um, the shadows, because the, the way the color works is like, if you have a very hot, like red, yellow light source, like the sun, and you shine it on something, the shadows are gonna be a little bit cooler than the rest of your subject. Um, so you can kind of, you got a little, you got a little butt crack there, huh? Whew, whew, those, those are some tight, tight cowboy pants. Um, you can kind of like, this is like real, real, we're real sloppy and I apologize, but we're doing it. But you, you can kind of like, you know, add a little, little color variation in there by just like putting a little putting a little blue in the shadows put just a little bit just it doesn't it doesn't have to take much and like this registers as blue here but like when you pull the pull the thing out it's actually brown we're like all the way in the red still right here like we don't even i don't even think it's gonna get yeah like down here it kind of does because we're those closest to the grad but like up here we're like still red you know like this is about this is about tricking the eye into into thinking how you want it to think. Um, so yeah, I I think that um, you're on the right track for sure. And then like you can carry this kind of like silhouetting. Like this guy is very readable as a silhouette, but then we get down here, and like his skin tone in value is so close to. Uh, the background that you have here you see like the value when we kick it over to grayscale like this value here and this value here are so similar look at these guys so similar that you're losing you're losing the uh silhouette uh yeah it looks yeah this is the thing when you when you when you do scenes like this like you can make when 
you start to make everything monochromatic on a comic book page, it can start to blend in with each other. It starts to, um, visually you start to like, not really know where panels end and begin like that kind of thing. Uh, it all starts like mushing together. And like, that's kind of what's happening here because partly because of the values and partly because it's all the same color, like through the, through the whole thing. Um, but yeah, like we can just, by just like putting a little, little sunshine through them, put a little flare there. Like we've added a little, little pop of color. See like this moment here now, and this moment here are like life rafts in this page because before it's like you're kind of like crippled by the monotony of it and now it's like you're creating these moments um and like this this moment especially because the artist drew these shadows on the ground like you can really go to town like like putting a putting like make it as bright as you want to make it like you can you can make that sand that sand kind of like pop like crazy uh, it's a little ridiculous what I'm doing here, but like, you know, you can amplify the shadows, uh, a good amount that way you can move in both directions. Um, but yeah, I feel like your, in your instincts are all right. It's just like, you haven't, um, refined the technique yet. Uh, but I do think that your, your palette's not bad. Like you're not, you're not, you're not doing what like a lot of amateur colorists do, which is like everything's the same color like i see you i see you going to this page washing it with color like thinking about like how the old west looks thinking about like making it dusty and dirty and you're communicating that very well um so there's no worries there like this actually reminds me a lot i did um when i first got started uh i did a um some dusty star stuff and your pages this page looks a lot like the dusty star pages that I did. Um, one of the things too, that you want to, uh, so like we're talking about color variation a little bit. Um, one of the things that, uh, is kind of neat to, to check. Like, I don't really do this at all, but like I saw some other artists on, um, Twitter or Instagram or somewhere, kind of doing this where they'll take well they'll take their page and and they were doing this on photos to pull um palettes out um they'll take the page and they'll they'll throw it through a mosaic and like you kind of like see like look at this size it's all the same color like we're all the same color but at this size we're starting to get like little pops of blue in, in here you know and like that's that's kind of where you want to be, and like this will show you what kind of palette you're working with, um, very very quickly. Values seem to be a trending issue. Uh, you trained with uh, Chris Soto, and he has told me you have to keep track of your values. Yeah yeah yeah. You just you gotta keep track of your values, man. I this is like, so, I mean we're talking to, like. It's just one of the things you have to juggle as a as a colorist. Um, but like your your pal your palette's good. I mean, I don't know. Uh, I would say the same thing here. You're you're. I can tell that you are. With, comic book coloring, pages can seem very daunting, um, and, like, when you color when you color um. Sequentials. It's a lot more daunting than coloring a pinup. When you color a pinup, yeah, I can see why you, why we're talking about value a lot because we're talking about value. Value's good here. I wouldn't I wouldn't say that you're working with necessarily uh, the best line art. Like it looks a little low res. Excuse me. Um, but like val the values are really good. You're getting high highs. You're getting low lows. Like you're you're good to go. Um, colors have a tough job. Sometimes you got to both carry a page and also step out of the way. Yeah. It's a real tough balancing act to, to work. 
Um, but it's like, you know, like doing, figuring out the values for a pinup is like a lot easier than like, you know, when you go into, um, sequential pages, it's very easy to get burnt out looking at the same thing over and over again, because you're like, you go into a page like this and you're like, well, I got to render this entire terrace. I have to like render her whole face. I got to render her here. I got to render her here. Wolverine's here now for some reason. Like, I don't know why, but like, and then Luke Cage, I guess is here too. I think this is Luke Cage. Could just be a guy. I don't know. But like, this is a lot compared to that Thor that we just looked at. Um, when we did, um, when we did uh, the, the cover that we did just recently, the uh, unexpected cover, it took us three sittings and six hours to do. And that was three figures and a bunch of skulls. Like, like I, they were placed in a very complex manner that made them very difficult to deal with. But it took us as long as it takes us. And my advice to you, um, when I look at a page like this, I see somebody who might have rushed a little bit. And that is never the thing you want to communicate. Like when I see the, the tables and stuff up here and it's all one color and the color is like kind of similar to the roofs over here, but then they're like putting in texture back here. It feels like the texture, you were like thinking about the texture and then you like got to the rest of the, the, the dinette set over here, these, these umbrellas and tables and stuff. And you were, and you were just like, Oh, I've already put like a couple of hours in like, I don't, I just don't know. If, do these guys matter at all? And the truth is that they do. Um, especially with superhero comics. Like you won't see a whole lot of this in superhero comics. Um, generally with superhero stuff, everything is rendered. Everything has color. Um, generally, and especially like a quiet scene like this. And I see the same thing kind of happening and this might just be like, you kind of didn't know where to take it, but like the same thing happening with, with the buildings kind of all looking samey. And you're like, you're like rendering it here. Like you're doing a light side and a dark side, but then you're like kind of doing it here. It's like, I don't know, like you should be working this trim. You should be working these windows. Um, you were so right about the rooftop scene burnt out. See, this is the thing though. This is the thing. So you have like, um, uh, specifically values and other pointers you're upload. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got, you have yet to correct it. Okay. Um, this is the thing is that you have what, uh, I am always jealous of, which is you have nothing but time, brother. Like you are set. Like you can work on this. You can walk away. You can come back. You're not on any kind of schedule. Like chill, man, chill. If the, if the, if you, the dinette set is going to take, if that rooftop's going to take all day, it takes all day. If it takes an hour and you only have an hour to give, you're only getting that dinette set done. And that is totally fine. Like slow down, do your thing. You know, you got, you got no, you got no deadline. You got nobody to impress, you know? Well, you do have, you're trying to impress people. That's, you have no deadline. <laughs> um, but yeah, because like, this is the, and this is the thing. This is like part of, uh, yeah, Wusa, exactly. Um, just slap a bunch of plaid on it. And this is the thing is like, so you didn't color, you, you like colored them white and you kind of rendered them. Um, and then they're peach and then they're green. And like, because you're not taking the care to, figure this stuff out initially you're paying for it later in the page like a lot of comics and a lot of uh, uh art in general is about like going in with a game plan and being like okay like this scene is going to be this color and we are going to root the reader to understand that they are in the same scene because this color is going to be a pattern throughout it and like you have the opportunity to be like, okay, we're going to, we're going to do a like light yellow kind of thing, but we're going to do these aqua, uh, 
you know, umbrellas that are going to pop, pop the reader, pull their attention. And then like, we're going to continue that through the thing where everything's kind of light yellow, except for these aqua umbrellas. And like, then like this aqua starts to make sense. If it like corresponds with this aqua, we'll, we understand that Wolverine's in the scene and then we can kind of like, you know, we can make it a back and forth when it's like, okay, like sunset scene umbrella on sunset color, umbrella, sunset color. We create kind of like a visual rhythm. And I see you doing that. You like your impulse to do that here is right. But I just feel like this page just needs like more care. Um, we don't acknowledge plaid comments anymore. Plaid comments are banned. Um, yeah, it just it just needs a little care. Um, the thing the thing that's frustrating when when I see uh, portfolios with this kind of stuff in it is that like when you have like less going on, you're more focused. And I think it's just you just got overwhelmed um, and burnt out. Uh, let's move on to this. Also, the other the other aspect is that like let's face it coloring uh tables and uh a rooftop garden not fun no not even a little just real not fun <laughs> and that might be part of the problem too because you're like oh, i want to jump into wolverine and it's like well vegetables and dessert is what i'm saying <laughs> um wolverine is from the canadian woods he should be wearing plaid uh, we're not going to acknowledge that. Okay, let's talk about this page. There's a lot going on. So, this page kind of suffers from the same same thing as this page. In that, it's kind of the same thing over and over again. You're like, Psylocke and Robot, Robot and Iceman, Iceman. Like, we're not doing a whole lot of backgrounds. We're not doing, like a whole like i i don't get a sense of space from this um as long as you're plaid in your heart that's all that matters <laughs> don't, don't feed it into them ron please not you man <laughs> so it's tough to get a sense of space with this with this piece and if you don't have the script i can imagine that like trying to figure out what's going on in this is also very difficult. Like, I think I'm confused because I think you're confused. <laughs> if that makes any sense. Like I see Psylocke hitting a robot and that's cool. But like, I don't know what this is. Like, is she in this thing? And then Iceman bursts through and the robots there. Or is, are they bursting out? Like, I can't... I'm trying to figure this out. I think that's what's happening. If she's hitting the robot, Iceman's outside, the robot's inside, and then Iceman bursts in. So, here's the thing. What you need to do for a page like this is set up a strong interior color. Like, I know you're doing a lot of, like, uh, special effects here, and you're trying to highlight that and you're trying to like make Psylocke look badass and that's great. But if you lean into that as your opening panel and then you change the second one's the interior of the building and then you change the color here, I don't know what's happening anymore. You know, I don't, I, the, my impulse was that, that they were reflected in the building and that Iceman was there and they were all outside. And then like, this didn't match up enough to to what's going on up here so you ended up with like kind of like three different color schemes or three different things going on and then i i'm lost you know like if you had a, if you had a strong background color here a strong background color here that corresponds and you you kind of do um but then you also have to have that strong background color kind of like in the in the window through the glass if we see the people through the glass you have to carry that color over um otherwise the reader will start to get confused the other thing that i would say like you, this page does not show um a silly question 
absolute black is k equals 80 is that uh color config in some place in photoshop i don't know if there's a i don't know if you can change the color config in photoshop um we're gonna we're gonna answer that question real quick but uh yeah the default the default black that i have is 90k um you want to do whenever you set up a page and you finalize it and you you super black it you want to do i've been doing um uh 60 60 40 100 is that what i've been doing that's 260 yeah that's what i've been doing lately um as the as the black black um at any rate we don't need we don't need any of this so the other thing that i wanted to mention my phone's blowing up people are talking about cats on my phone um your Iceman here versus your Iceman here are kind of two different colors. And because of that, the reader's going to not exactly... Um, maybe it feels like there's two different out outsides. Yeah. Uh, nice realm team. Thanks. Um, so, like, this is, like, a simple... We can... Um, this is a simple fix. If you feel like... One thing is is not matching up with another. I'll show you how to fix it. So we're gonna fix the ice man that's out here to match the ice ice that's coming in through the window. Again, this page has value values problems, but that's something that you know you need to work on, and we don't need to talk about again. Um, oh my god, I'm trying to I'm really trying with this selection. I should probably stop. Okay, so like. Here's, here's the Iceman. We're going to match it to this blue down here. Um, why are there no floors? Or I know. That building, there's problems with the art. Look, here's the thing, too. Is that, like, this, is, this might be professional. This might be professional line art. However, that does not mean that it doesn't have storytelling problems. And as a colorist... You kind of have to sit, you kind of have to like solve those storytelling problems and different pages are going to have different levels of like challenge essentially. Um, when I gave, if, if you, I know you're in the discord and I know that you're thinking about this stuff or you're aware of this stuff because um, we have in here uh, this page, which is a one out of the uh, ultimate portfolio. So, um, Stuart Eminen solves all the problems, L low challenge level for storytelling. Um, this page, high challenge level for storytelling because the artist here is just kind of drawing what they want to draw and they're making it an exciting, interesting thing, but like you kind of have to solve, you kind of have to throw all the life, uh, life rafts for the people who are reading. Like you have to be like. Here's where Psylocke is. Now she is still in that same place. You know, like you have to like let them know capital letters what is going on because unfortunately the artist did not necessarily help you out. Um, but let's get back to matching. So um, a quick way to like match this kind of stuff together is to use color balance. Um, let me see if I can find where image adjust color balance. Here it is. So... Here we have the color balance. Um, you can kind of like tilt uh, something that looks like it's it might have gone awry in your coloring. Um, if you rendered with with one thing and then you and then you left and you came back and you finished the page and you're like, oh, it does I can't get it to like match right. Usually something like this will help you. Um, you can kind of just play with the sliders a little bit, and uh, usually you're 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 pretty much pretty much fine we need to get out of the green there we go yeah so like boom now now it matches a little better uh and you won't you won't necessarily have that problem where like ice man's looking a little greenish um cool rendering on the robot uh, i wish it wasn't so dark but fix that uh values the values are like too dark but the rendering is cool like i see what you're doing here with like the edges and stuff and like 
I wish this rendering was in the Chrome that, w that we saw before. Uh, I see you thinking about it. So I don't know which one you did at which time, but I see you thinking about it. And I see you growing a little bit, which is great. Uh, but yeah, I would just shit can this page <laughs> like out of the portfolio. You know, it's just it's too much work to get it to work right. And even if you got it to work right, even if you got it to work right and it was totally readable, I don't think that it, this is the thing you want to think about when you put together a portfolio is the page needs to not only be like, show your skill off, but be able to communicate the level of skill that you have. You know what I mean? Like you need to, you need to put, be able to put the page in front of someone who is not a colorist and they need to understand that you are jumping through hoops to get to where you need to go. If you, if you solve all the problems on this page, people are just going to be like, Oh yeah, it's a comic page. Like, of course, Iceman's blue. You know what I mean? Like it, even though like I look at this page and I'm like, Oh, you're solving a lot of problems. An editor might not necessarily see that, especially if they're green, you know, if they're new to editing, if they're, if they're new to the whole process, um, they might miss it. And so it doesn't necessarily communicate your abilities as an artist. Uh, so yeah, I would just chuck this thing right in the trash. <laughs> also, if you want to communicate that this is glass, um, I guess we're, we're still going to work on this. <laughs> uh, cause I think this is a, this is a good tip. We're going to, we're going to, uh, screen grab this. Man, it is obnoxious that Adobe will not let me just grab the grab the pick. Okay, so um, one of the things that you can do to communicate that this is glass is just like put a, a glare through it, and you can do this for the whole thing. Like we're gonna oh man, selections with the mouse are a thing. Just Please be patient. Oh my God, I didn't even select that. Be patient with me, be patient. I don't, we're gonna get robot hand in this. Just disregard robot hand and Iceman. But you can kind of just like take a color, uh, set it to screen and just like, like throw a little grad in and it will look like it'll communicate that like light is hitting a, um, a sheet of glass you know and then from here you can even further highlight it by just like taking taking a, a a thing um thank you for the host uh taking taking a thing let's set to screen and just kind of like like this is you don't see this a lot like a ton in in real life but like this is like comic language cartooning you know like this tells a reader this is glass um a lot of people don't really necessarily understand a lot of colors when they start they think okay i have to render everything photo real you know like that's my job to digital paint this thing like it would show in real life but the reality is is that like you're cartooning just as much as the uh person who is uh, doing the line art like what you're you're communicating like they're communicating that this is Psylocke this does not look like a human being this looks like a cartoon like and you need to you need to communicate in a visual language as well um, and like this is part of that it, it might I like your mileage may vary like you may want to play around with it uh, we did it very quick and dirty but you understand what I'm saying uh, Man, my phone is just blowing up with cat discussion. Uh, I think this is a continuation of the last page, but yeah, now he's outside. Wait, no, they're inside now. Shit, I, I lost the train of thought. Now he's outside. Um, cut this page. <laughs> like you're doing a ton of work here with the, these effects and everything. And like, I'll give you some tips on the effects in a second, but like, you're also like the car and the sidewalk and the building, they're all one color. And like, 
all you're communicating to me is that you're turning in unfinished work. If I'm an editor looking at this, you need to, you need to do those windows. I was, I was talking to um, someone at a con just recently, uh, Darren, and he, he's a colorist. He just uh, got out of SCAD like a year ago ish. Um, and he showed me thoughtful, complete work first year second year came back and he got a little better but he also got a little lazier and it's because he's working like a day job and i understand that you have my sympathies like working a day job and then doing this in the in the evening is tough it's a hustle for sure and i understand that you do not want to be bothered to color those windows but like you either need to uh pay for flats out of pocket if you don't want to color the windows or you need to uh flat it yourself and just suck it up like because you you can't turn this you kind of can't turn this stuff around you know that like as cool as the effects are and as as neat as the rendering like freaking storm looks dope as hell uh like i really like this this red and this like uh like dark brown that you got going on like you didn't you didn't make her um crayola box gray like she should have like her regular costume is I think this looks great and like you're you're doing like cuts and grads for the hair which is neat but like you're doing all this cool work back here and like it's just like i'm disregarding the page entirely because we didn't do the windows it's like just do the windows do the windows um real quick let me give you a quick pointer on uh Oh man, this is everything. You've guys seen everything now. I forgot to hit alt print screen. So uh, with lightning, you want to think about it like, um, like a lightsaber. Uh, lightsabers are like the ultimate cliff note. Hold on one second. Let me... Um... Let me Google lightsabers. So, uh, give me one second. Look at these nerds. <laughs> what a bunch of idiots. Anyway, the point is, is that like, with lightsabers, uh, <laughs> with lightsabers, you have uh, this kind of like white core to them, um, and it communicates that the the saber is very very hot. Like this is a blue saber here, and it is a very light blue, almost white. This is a green saber, very light green, almost white. This is a red saber back here. We're in like a magenta. It's almost white. Like here's here's where the value is. Right right here right here. Um, same thing with this. I mean, these guys are a little more muted, uh, cause there's a little more smoke, but we're still like almost white. Um, this is worth grabbing like one pixel, but yeah, they're hovering around here. So, um, lightsabers are kind of like the ultimate cliff note. That's how it clicked in my brain about this kind of stuff. Um, with the lightning, you want to think about it the same way um we're going to uh grab as much lightning as we can here uh maybe maybe grab like a ton of it let's grab a ton of it trying to trying to make a decent selection for you so i see you going in here with like a soft brush and your very carefully weaving through this and I'm gonna give you a quick tip here. So we grabbed a bunch of lightning. We're we're freaking quick and dirty right now, by the way. Like this is not uh exactly how you should be handling this, but lightning. We're doing yellow lightning because it's 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 yellow over here. We're just gonna fill it with yellow. Select modify contract like seven pixels that's too much because we're working on a jpeg 
uh, we'll do three pixels, just white. Um, and then you can even uh, colorize the line art, but we won't, we're not even gonna colorize the line art right here. We're just gonna, we're just gonna um, grab this, grab these white pixels here. Oh my God, you're seeing everything. Um, uh, feather, all I did, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slow down. Okay, per this review, should you quit coloring? No, you should not quit coloring. There's a, you're doing a lot, you have the right instincts. You're doing a lot here that, you know, you should be doing. At 100% don't quit coloring. I'm trying to show you like where you need to improve. Uh, we're gonna circle back around to like exactly what you need to do. Um, but I don't think you should quit coloring. I think you should absolutely cal calibrate your monitor, but I don't think you should quit coloring. Um, so if we if we take the selection and we're using the wand here, but I think the lasso will do the same thing. If we right click it, and it will not do the same. Oh, it's in the wrong place. If we go to feather, and we go ten pixels, and then we like do a screen layer, right here, and we just uh, fill it a couple times, we can really make it glow. So we're using the same principles yes i totally agree ron there's a lot of good stuff in here um i just think that you need to slow down and focus uh we're using the same principles as those idiots with the lightsabers with the lightning should nick quit coloring why why would you even is that is that what people are talking about what what wow <laughs> so like this is the same this is the same kind of thing where it's like you want to think about it like you want to think about the lightning like a lightsaber you want to go core white light color and then like like a saturated light color saturated darker color done you know and then you can use that little feather trick to make it all glow um we made it we made storm glow she looks all right Um, yeah, there's good stuff in, like, you're putting, like, blue into the, into the yellow here, and it isn't turning, like, like, you're getting a little bit muddy, but it's not, like, you're communicating the blue there, like, really, really kind of interestingly, like, I, you know, you're putting, like, blue into the skin tone here. I feel like all your instincts are correct. You're just, like, trying to do a, and, like, this texture is, like, freaking rad like this is something so there's a thing that um there's a thing that siggy <laughs> there's a thing that uh uh i was talking about with oming the last time i saw him which was um when because i was talking to him about how i wanted to write some stuff and i'm not a knowledgeable writer by any means but he told me something that kind of like stuck with me, which is like when you don't know how to do something and you're trying stuff out, you don't get hit with like a bunch of baggage of like, you're not supposed to do it this way. You're not supposed to do it this way. Putting this te texture into uh, like the lightning and the speed that's going on here is something that like I personally would have never done but looks fucking great on your page. Like it's something I just wouldn't have even thought about. So, I mean, I would not like, like you were saying, I wouldn't take this too, too hard. I just want you to be like, I just want to give you good advice for going forward. Um, but I would, uh, I would cam these pages though, because they are very tough to follow. Like, cause we're in, we're, Psylocke in the building battling the guy, but it's like a corner of a building. I think they might be outside the building. I think they're outside, actually. And then Iceman bursts through the building to the outside here. And then the robot's outside, but he's not covered in ice. So it's tough when you put these two pages together because it's very hard to communicate that they go together. I think there's a page missing, maybe? Um. At any rate, I would cut these pages because there's a lot of, like just stuff that needs to get worked out on a colorist level that is very difficult to do uh, as far as communicating the storytelling um 
and you know it just does not showcase your skills well um i would pick up uh another one of these pages out of the ultimate portfolio this scene by the way aces this is the best stuff i've looked at from you this stuff is rad um this is a, you're a little much with the with the orange and green down here it's working but it's just like a tad too much um but yeah this stuff is working really really well especially like you're rendering you're doing this kind of like purple bluish scene and the rendering that you're the colors that you're choosing for um the light hitting machine man communicates that the light is purple very very well um yeah i don't have enough good things to say about this like you're kind of running into a little bit of the same problems that um uh the last machine man pages that we looked at where it's like kind of all the same uh where it's just like a little bit too samey where the characters kind of start folding in because like this blue is kind of the same as this blue here which is like your community you want to communicate floor really well but that's a very easy change to make you know if we just if we just went in and kind of like did a light colored floor you would communicate floor floor and wall very very well um like yeah you you and uh i think barry was the last one that that did this uh this scoop here looks so good you guys did a great job with that uh the glows look good like yeah uh here's a quick tip for uh explosions explosions are the same same thing as lightsabers but you get to like play around um here we're gonna open this up in photoshop explosions are the same thing as lightsabers but you get to play around there's like with every explosion there's going to be like kind of a core that you can kind of put in here so you can kind of like do this kind of thing where you just kind of like it kind of like bubbles um with with explosions and you can kind of like do like another round of bubbling like something like that and then like kind of like put highlights in here i mean we're super sl sloppy and dirty but like you kind of get what i'm saying like you can kind of like make, give the explosion like a little bit of shape that way um and then you can also uh because you have that nice white core you can you can make that you can make that core glow and then we get we get a little little bit of an explosion it's like reading is very hot and this is the thing this is the thing when you're coloring you want to look for opportunities like this because now that that is reading nice and hot you can kind of take this machine man and like give him like a secondary light source like this that's like real real like tough you know um and it like puts him contextually in the place really really well uh but yeah i would just pull back a little bit um from this stuff and what i mean by that is like so machine man is normally uh, a purple and i think you just went a little like a hair too buck wild on uh the washes and stuff like that i think that um if you uh just pull back a little bit like that that is 30 percent um maybe maybe we don't actually want a purple we want a blue Like, just get a little bit of uh, difference, difference, like, in the in the costume versus the jacket. Because um, you're starting to lose, like, this is skin tone, this is jacket, um, just a little bit. Uh, so you just want to, like, kind of scale back a little bit. But even that, like, you know, this, when we back up... Um, this looks like we're kind of drowning in red and just that little change that just that little bit kind of made us not so drowning in red, but still kept your theme, still kept your uh, color scheme. And also 
something else that I got to give you props for. Like, we jump from this scene to this scene, and it is a clear, like, you are not fucking around. We are in a new location. And, like, that is something that I feel like some even professional colorists struggle with sometimes. So props to you for that. Like, keep doing that. Um, let's see what else we got here. We got Batman page. This page looks pretty good. Uh, you're rendering a little bit more. I feel like you're a little more confident in your rendering. Um, I don't know who this is, but the the artwork is really good. Uh, you're doing this like red lamp thing that is fucking rad. Uh, same criticism as uh, this page. Oh yeah, no problem, man. Uh, same criticism as this page, which is you're leaning into the color scheme so hard that you kind of need a little bit of, you need something else on the page uh, in the color scheme to kind of give a little bit of, of, uh, I don't know, like a life raft. You need like help, um, from the, from the, for the reader. Uh, you're doing this like this right here. This is where you want to be, man. Like you're doing this like super light against this dark and you're popping Batman's shoulder and it's making me like here in the action. Excellent. Excellent. Um, I would, what, what? Oh, we're not in Photoshop. Um, like this stuff in here. So you're doing like a texture thing in here that looks really cool. Um, you're echoing the texture that the, uh, artist originally put down, which is, which is awesome. That's a hundred percent where you want to be. Um, the only thing is, is, uh, we're running into the same problems with value and I would just lighten, lighten stuff up in here so that when we know that we're right here just a little lightened uh and then like the same thing in uh this part right here like this guy is shocked you don't have to keep with um any kind of like batman looks a little pink naked yeah a little bit you could you could put a little bit more blue in into batman and it will he'll start registering as clothes closed the problem is that you're you're kind of getting the same pink here as you are in the the guy next to him um but when whenever there's like kind of like a startled kind of like starburst thing like this guy has you don't have to keep it necessarily within the color scheme like that little bit of orange helps us helps us so so much this is from the elmer fudd batman one shot that's a that's a cool book. I uh, I forgot about that book. <laughs> I never read it. But like you know, we're still using we're still doing warm color scheme, but now we've we've popped the little <gasps> moment of of this guy about to be shotgunned in the face. Um, yeah, by just like changing the color scheme around a little bit. Um, making it lighter again value uh let's see what else you got what are we up to man we're in an hour hour 30 already jeez jeez is that it that is all the pages we've gone through all of your portfolio pages we're gonna we're gonna hit the uh pinups real quick if you were gonna make a portfolio for review by the way, um, eight to 10, uh, hello there. Uh, after me hosting, I had to get dinner. Yeah. 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 You're a colorist student in this review it helps a lot. Oh yeah. No problem. Um, if you are interested, uh, it, down below, by the way, for anyone interested, um, in, in the YouTube link down below, there's a, I have a whole playlist section of reviews. And so you can go through and you can listen to me basically tear down people's dreams for hours and hours no no i'm the whole goal of this is to like put you on the path i want you on the path and i think that um we can kind of like i feel like these guys have a lot of the same problems that you do 
with um, a lot of the other stuff, uh, which is value and uh, anchor location. These pages, because they're pinups, you don't necessarily need to anchor the location that well. So you might be, I see you doing a lot more pinup work than you're doing sequential work. And I think that the problem is, is that when you get to it, when you get to something, you know, like this, I, by the way, I feel like probably the most successful stuff out of here is the walking dead one here. These guys, this one for sure. Um, you did a really good job with the value on this one. Um, it could be a little lighter, but you're using that high, high white that, uh, you probably should be using. Uh, yeah, I like, I like, like those three. I would keep those. Maybe the, maybe the Green Lantern. Green Lantern looks pretty good too. Actually, Green Lantern looks dope. You should definitely keep that one. Um, but yeah, like the thing about all this, all of these pinups is like, it's fun to experiment on pinups and we do pinups on the stream because I feel like doing a full page is kind of like a little tougher to communicate in, in one or two sittings. Um, we did a Spider-Man 2099 page when I first started the stream and I was like, Oh God, this is going to take forever. And it did. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would, I would take, I would. <laughs> so I almost would cut this entirely. This actually is, looks pretty good too, actually. Um, but I would almost cut this whole section entirely because like you're never, you're never going to get hired based on a pinup. Pinups are good to do. There's two thing, two purposes that pinups serve. One, you get to like test out new techniques on something that is uh, low impact. You know, like you don't have to do it for two pages. You don't have to do it for six pages. You don't even have to do it for two images. You just do one image. You can test out new technique, test out new brushes, test out whatever you want to test out. Um, the pinups occur uh, across your Facebook feeds. You get the bug to color them. They call out to you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, well, that's this is the other thing that I was going to say is that the second thing that pinups have going for them is that they are easily digestible, which means like you can do pinups as a way to kind of like steer people to your content. They play really well on like um, Instagram. They play, they play a lot better than pages because pages are very complicated. Pages, there's a lot going on. A pinup that's like solid, just like a single image that I can see while I'm scrolling through my feed. Like that's something that um, the internet is kind of like built for. That's kind of something that like Twitter's built for, uh, Instagram's built for. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't do pinups anymore. I think that you should, but you should use them as a way to like funnel people into your portfolio page to see your real like chops, you know, pinups are a way of like teasing somebody into thinking, Oh, I got to check out this guy's stuff. You know, pinups are Instagram fodder, uh, which is awesome. Like, I don't think, I think that like the way that people communicate with art and the way that people interact with art has changed a lot. And so I used to say no pinups at all, never do pinups. But now I think that like they serve as a calling card. They serve as a way to funnel, uh, put eyes on your stuff. Like I want to see, this is the thing. When I see uh, a pinup that I like, uh, I usually click that person's link, go through and see their other stuff and then see if they have a portfolio page. Personally, I do this. Um, I'm not even trying to hire anybody and I check it out because like, I'm curious what else they're doing. What else they got going on? Like if they're just pinup machine, I'm like, see you later. If they're doing sequential pages, I'm like skin in the game. Let's do this thing. You know, like, uh, so I'm not saying don't ever do the pinups, but what I'm saying is maybe slow the roll on the pinups. Like I would have, I would have liked to see six less pinups and like this page knocked out of the park, you know, like 
that that's kind of where my mentality is. Um, so let's just circle around to, to kind of like sum up what we got going on here. Um, the portfolio page looks uh, totally presentable, uh, clear, communicates everything. Maybe cut the videos, maybe cut the cut the uh, splash pages. Um, think of the portfolio page as like a half step between a, a resume and a, a business card. So that way you want to like narrow people into like, here are my sequential pages, done deal. Um, yeah, coloring pinups can also build a nice rapport with the artists that made them. That is a hundred percent true. Yeah, like and the other thing is too is like if you're looking to build a social media and audience that kind of thing, if you like color a Sean Murphy thing and then Sean Murphy retweets it to all his followers, you may nab a few followers from that. Like as like a device for funneling people to your work, they're fantastic. As far as like getting the job they're not great so but yeah like i said i would have liked to see like six less pinups and like a just this page just like knocked out of the park you know six more hours on this page or whatever um i would slow down and i would think one of the things that i like to do personally when i get done with a page is i wait a day or two sit on it don't show it to anyone. Don't put it out there. And then, because there's no rush. There's like literally no rush. Sit on it for a day or two. Come back to it with fresh eyes. And be like, if somebody else did this, try to put yourself in somebody else's position. If somebody else did this, how would I make it better? And you ask yourself that question and you kind of like, a, a moment of clarity will happen with you. I swear. It's surreal. So you you ask yourself that question and you go, okay, well, maybe I would have changed this. Maybe I would have changed... If this was somebody else's work that I saw on the internet, maybe I would have done this differently. Oh, these are the things I need to improve. I think you should absolutely do that. Just slow down. The other thing is, you got to calibrate your monitor. I feel like those two things will kick your work up to the next level. I think that you are, as illustrated by this page... Um, as illustrated by like what's going on here. I think you're like, you're thinking about color correctly and that you're trying to make solid color schemes. You're clearly using washes. Um, like the scene changes are real good. Um, you know, I would just calibrate your monitor, think about values. And even like, I've gotten into the habit of like, I finish a page, I, I drop like some values that are dark on the page and just, check the percentages and be like, am I comfortable with putting, you know, 300%, 300% uh, ink out there and like, you know, be like, well, I'm going to try it this uh, this time. I'm going to see it in print. Oh, it wasn't so great. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scale back. You know, it's about like finding that groove. Um, which publishers should you even attempt uh, sending your portfolio to? Uh, after you correct everything mentioned in this, in this review. Um, so I don't have a lot of, uh, uh, I don't know. I'm like too far removed from shopping portfolios around. I don't even know like really who are the places that you should be starting out with. Uh, my advice to you is to um, the same advice I have for everyone. Take the portfolio, print out like, or, you know, uh, put a, put a link for it, um, print out a bunch of copies, hand them out, like whatever you got to do. Uh, or maybe just, let me give you real advice rather than stumbling around in my brain for a minute. <laughs> Let's take a drink of water. Go to conventions. First and foremost, meet other, yeah, cons. Take your portfolio, print it out put it in a book or put it on an iPad. iPad adds like another level of like tech stuff. Cause sometimes people are like, Oh, check it. Let me show you my portfolio. And I'm like, sure. Let me see it. And then they're like, hold on. I got to like check this thing out. So a lot of times I would rather see it on paper just because then they're like here and that's it. You know, like it's quick, it's easy. It's done. 
print it out um, eight and a half by 11. Uh, you don't have to print it huge. Uh, it'll fit right in your bag. You know, you can bring it into the convention and just like go to any artists, any and all artists. Um, and you want to, you want to like try to avoid top tier people. Like Jim Lee might look at your stuff and be like, Oh, it's cool. You know, like, and he might even give you like really good feedback. Um, he is actually a incredibly patient, gracious man. Uh, he might give you really great feedback, but Jim's never going to really hire you. Like where you want to be is like that, like mid tier range at cons where like dudes are super talented, but they're like grinding it out, you know? And then a lot of times those guys might have a colorist coloring their stuff that is maybe starting out and is not very good that you can like swoop in and like, be like, yo, you should check my shit out. But like, don't go to the table and be like, yo, you should check my shit out. You should be like, Hey, I have a color portfolio. Would you mind taking a look? And what happens is like either they are too busy and they don't take a look, which is fine. Um, or they take a look and they're like, Hey, this is really good. You should take my card. Like we should work on something together. Like that is how, that is how you like grind out the artists. Um, Make artists want to request you on their stuff. Yes. Make them think it's their idea. Yes. 100%. Um, next time you're appearing at a con, I'm going to swing by exactly that. Yeah. Pages printed out. Yes. And let me tell you, if you printed out this stuff, you would know instantly if your ink levels are too high. They are going to come out of your printer rippled and you're going to be like, oh no, they are black. I need to calibrate my monitor. Um Come to me at conventions. I don't know shit about coloring. I'll just I'll just be like, good job, no matter what. Yeah, but like, yeah. If you if you just sh just put it in front of people, like, you will get. This is what's gonna happen when you just come to cons and be like, hey, can you take a look at my por color portfolio? I'm a colorist. This is what's gonna happen. You're gonna get a lot of feedback. You know, maybe not an hour forty seven minutes worth, like we're up to right now, but. You're going to get a lot of feedback from a lot of different people, a lot of different eyes, you know, and when you do that, I was told when I was uh, coming up that like, uh, if somebody says, if somebody says something three times, then it's true. So like, if you go to six people and one person's like, uh, I wish the Chrome was better on this thing that we're, we're looking at down here. Um, and I'm that guy and nobody else says it. You probably don't have to work on that. But like if everybody across the board is like, yo, your values are a little off. Like this is printing a little dark. Then like that is something you got to work on, you know? Yeah. So like that's that's the thing. You're going to get like a, a more of a surface read on your work, but you're going to get it across a lot of different spectrums. And like you can weed out like, bad critiques, good critiques, that kind of thing. You can get like more of a compass on like what's happening, where you should go. Um, since colors change so much depending on your printer. Um, well, I mean, you could take them to like Kinko's and get them printed out in like a, a nice, uh, nice printer. Um, see how it looks. Colors will change across printers, but colors also change across screens and colors will always look better on a screen than they will in print but if i'm an editor that's hiring someone for print i might want to see how it looks in print you know so it's like i don't know if you print something out and you're like hey the colors look different than they are on my screen tweak it print it out again you know be patient you don't have to this idea like don't print it out the night before you go to the con and be like oh fuck well this is what we're doing you know like Print it out a month before. Have a, have a portfolio on hand, ready to go. Like, be prepared. Um, printing out on paper is a really quick way to see when something's wrong. Exactly. And very similarly, if you draw... There's been so many times in college and now that i am been drawing, because I've started drawing again. Uh, I've drawn something and I've been like, 
that looks really great on paper. And then I take a picture of it and I see it on my phone on like another medium. And I'm like, this is a piece of shit. Like I really, I really screwed the pooch, you know, like you can, you can just by changing how it's delivered to your eyeballs, you will see things that you need to fix. Um, or maybe one week before, since you got a con in a week. Yeah. I mean, as long as you're prepared, don't, don't leave this kind of stuff to like the night before is what I'm saying. Like, and this is something else that in general, when I was starting out, I was like, well, I gotta, I gotta do all the, the new work. I gotta put all the new work in there. I gotta scramble for this thing that I just made to put it in there. Here's the dirty little secret. You are getting better as you go, but I've talked to editors where I was like, I was told in college, you know, show your work to the editor every other week, like every month, like, like grind them into the ground with portfolio reviews. Um, so I was told that. And then I talked to an editor and they were like, yo, we can really only see growth like six months at a time. So my advice to anyone doing, doing this kind of thing is like, maybe do like every six months, update the portfolio. Maybe even three months if you feel like you're really, really cooking with gas, but like three months at a time. Tops. Uh, is there a sp specific type of paper? I mean, I don't know. Like, this is the thing. Is like DC just changed their paper. I don't know what Marvel's printing on right now. Like, I don't think, as long as it's like printed, it looks good and it's on paper, that's all you got to worry about. Like, just go in. I would say the heavier the cardstock, uh, the better it's going to look because the more ink it's going to soak up. That's really all you got to know. Uh, can confirm from graphic design it's a pain dealing with paper. Yeah, yeah, it is. It is a real pain. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, that's my advice to you. Like, I would try to make these changes... Think about picking up a, a spider cam device to calibrate your monitor. Print some stuff out and see how, how it looks and then try to match your monitor to how it looks and then work from there. Um, and you'll you'll start... Because, like, dude, I see it in the other screen. Like, if we crank up the, the, the brightness on this bad boy, like, your work looks good. Like, you're thinking about things right. You're just not executing well because you're getting bogged down in the tech stuff. Um, thanks a million for the review. Yeah. I, I think you're on the path. I think you just like, like I said, quick, quick, very quick recap. Cause I feel like we're rambling. Uh, values, 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 calibrate that monitor. Um, get a little color variation when you, when you feel like maybe you're a little too monochrome, uh, or monochromatic, uh, cut all the all the pages that are not working well as far as like professional liner do more of the ultimate portfolio i'm telling you dude like that stuff will get you work like if you execute on those pages really well you won't have the, the same problems as you did with like the um uh these pages these pages are a shit show when it comes to storytelling and like you're gonna want to avoid stuff like that so um you love to color and being a comic creator has always been your dream. Dude, you're on your way. You just got to like, like I said, slow down values, work on the ultimate portfolio, um, and then just start taking it to cons and getting reactions. Like you're on your way. That's how I got started. Yeah, for sure. All right, man. All right. Uh, that was uh, Jose's portfolio. Uh, you can see the link right up here. It's uh, jalopez.myportfolio.com uh slash portfolio i guess uh his uh twitter's right 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 down down there oh god right down there right in the corner um comics and stuff he's he's hanging out he's uh got a youtube page apparently too where he's doing time lapses you can check that out if you want to hire him here he is let, let him go hire him hire him for stuff <laughs> um Thank you for submitting. I know it's like it's it's a little bit scary because it's I knocked over that I knocked over that thing. It's a little bit scary because it's, you know, like 
tons of eyeballs and, and like we're doing this live and there's a lot of pressure on you. Uh, mm -hmm. But thank you very much for, uh, you know, being brave and letting us do this because I feel like it helps other people. We have one more portfolio in the can ready to go. Uh, we're going to be working on that next week. Also, we're going to be doing some art next week. I'm not exactly sure what we're going to be doing. We might play a game this weekend. I'm not exactly sure. It can be intimidating, but you learn so much from it. Yeah, that's the thing. Is like, I don't want to. I don't want to sit here and this is the this is the thing with all portfolios. Is like, I don't want to sit here and just like, you know, take shots at you. I want to get you like on the path. You're doing you're doing a lot of things right. You just gotta tweak those things that are wrong. You'll be fine. And then after that, it's just like clocking the hours in the chair, man. Uh, but yeah, uh, thank you for the portfolio submission. We'll be doing another one next week. We'll be doing some more art next week. Uh, going to try to play a game this weekend, but we'll see how it goes. Uh, until then, everyone out there in, uh, in portfolio, how does the portfolio review work? You have to be a sub. Yeah, man. You sub subscribe here and then either get in touch with me, um, on, uh, uh, discord. If you link your Twitch to your to your Twitch ID to your Discord ID, which I know is a little bit of a pain in the ass, the Discord is down below. It's a little chat program. Um, also, I'm in the Discord like all day, like while I'm working. So if you have, I if you're like working on stuff and you're like, oh man, I just I really need another set of eyes on this, and I have time, I will absolutely give you my time. Um, there's also line art that is up there for uh, for you to pull down. We share tips and tricks with art. We share tricks with tools. We share brush packs, um, art that is inspiring us. And we're talking about comics pretty much around the clock. Like you guys want to get in that discord, even if you're not going to subscribe. Um, when you do subscribe, oh, you're already there and you got your accounts link. Perfect. Then uh, once you subscribe, you'll get access to two special rooms. Um, one is the portfolios for review. Drop your portfolio in there and I will talk about it on stream. Um, we're only going to try to do one portfolio a week. Uh, and then the other thing is, uh, your suggestions for the stream. If you have either content that you want me to see me color, that's like you're struggling with, or maybe, uh, a, a certain artist that I can reach out to and ask if they want me to color their stuff on stream, um, or a game that you want to see me play or whatever, whatever direction you want for the stream. Uh, obviously at my discretion, sometimes suggestions are a little rough around the edges. Maybe I don't want to do it. So, you know, it's at my discretion, but yeah, uh, pop in, let me know what you want to do. Yeah. Uh, yeah, seriously, upload it to YouTube and it's going to be up on my YouTube too. So it's, it'll be everywhere. Uh, anyway, everyone out there, I hope this review hasn't, hasn't scared you. And I hope that you're out there and you're going to think about comics and then you're going to execute. You're going to make comics. I want you to keep making comics. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.